Hello and welcome to this absolute beginner's exercise in programming. If you've never coded before, that's absolutely fine. And if you have coded before, well, that's absolutely fine too. My name is Rob O'Connor. I'm a lecturer in computing at WIT, and I'm also a mentor at the Coder Dojo in Dunmore East in County Waterford. Normally when we do these things, we do them in person um, and it's usually a bit of fun, a bit of crack in the room. Obviously because of the situation that we're in, we can't do that. Uh, so I'm speaking to you from my makeshift workspace in the attic in my house, which has lots of random things in the background. There's a few musical instruments over there and some electronics that really are dead and I should throw them out, but I can't bring myself to do that. Uh, and other random boxes and things thrown around the place. That's just my way of apologizing for the background in advance. Um, anyway, hour of code. That's what we're going to do today. An hour of code is uh, one of these introductory exercises that is produced by code.org. Code.org are a worldwide body uh, and they're set up to promote computer science education all across the globe. Um, the idea with this is it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter whether you're 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 or 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, uh, anyone can have a go. Although if we have any 100 year old coders, I, I'd love to hear about that, that'd be great fun. Um, this exercise, you don't need to have uh, any sort of special equipment. Once you have any sort of a computer, you should be okay. Uh, it will also work on a tablet, like uh, an iPad. It's not really great on phones though, uh, unfortunately. Uh, all you need to have installed is a browser, a web browser, uh, something like Chrome or Edge or Safari or Firefox or whatever it is that you're using. Once it's a modern browser that you have installed, you should be absolutely fine. Uh, the hour of code exercises, um, they're, they're lots of fun. Uh, they're usually great crack. Uh, they have, uh, they can be a bit cheesy in places as well, but sure, that's okay. Uh, as I said, it's produced by code.org and they have lots and lots and lots of free resources um, that are available online for anyone to use. Uh, and after this, if you wanna have a, a browse around their site and try any of them out, uh, that'd be great. Uh, today what we're going to do though is we're going to use one of their Minecraft themed exercises. So to begin, let's go over to the Hour of Code website, which is hourofcode.com. It's very easy to find, um, or you can just do a quick search for Hour of Code and you'll find it handy enough. Uh, there's lots of stuff here. Um, if you want to have a browse around of it before we begin, uh, you can pause the video and come back. Um, there's actually lots of videos of, of various famous people doing it. There's a uh, Justin Trudeau, he's the Prime Minister of Canada, or there's a uh, Serena Williams, one of the greatest tennis players of all time. Uh, there's her having a go. There's lots of videos there. And as you can see, people have done this all across the world, including Ireland. Lots of stuff here. Uh, we've been involved in this for quite some time. Uh, assuming you're ready to begin, what we're going to do is click into the activities. Okay, and then we're going to go to this Minecraft Hour of Code. There's lots of these other ones here, we'll come back to them later. Uh, before we begin, just to tell you the type of programming it is, this is a block-based programming exercise. Uh, this was popularized by a programming environment called Scratch, uh, which is what we use a lot in Coder Dojo, uh, and you might even learn a bit more about that later on. Uh, what's great about blocks is that it's all drag and drop. You won't get bogged down in a lot of typing and making mistakes because you've got a semicolon or a bracket out of place or something like that. Uh, through the blocks, we're going to learn a little bit about procedural programming. That's where we work out programs kind of like a recipe. So you have step one, then step two, then step three, then step four. Uh, and you've got to think about that in advance before you, you've got to think about what your steps are before you begin. You've got to think about what the goal is you want to uh, achieve. Uh, then we're going to learn a little bit about loops, which is basically where instead of saying step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, where they're all the same, uh, you could say do step one and do it five times or whatever. And then we learn a little bit about conditional branching. Conditional branching is uh, where we will get the code to make decisions for us. So if certain conditions do this, otherwise do something else. Um, and again, that's a very, very powerful part of programming. Uh, so we click into the Minecraft Hour of Code and we click Start. 
And what you'll see is that there's actually lots of these. There's loads of these. And if you want to try any more of them afterwards, that's cool. Uh, we're going to have a go at the Voyage Aquatic, uh, which is a relatively new one. Um, it's good fun. It's kind of water themed. So we'll click start. And it's going to play a video for us. So let's look at this. Hello, you're just in time. Welcome to the Voyage Aquatic. I'm about to embark on a quest to find hidden underwater treasure, and I'm very glad to have your help. Who knows what we'll encounter along these mysterious waterways? We're meant to meet our first guide somewhere on this dock. Welcome adventurers. To complete the Voyage Aquatic, you'll need to solve a series of puzzles using code. Here's how it works. Your screen is split into three main parts. On the left, you'll see the Minecraft world. The middle area is your toolbox, where you can find coding commands. And on the large area on the right is your workspace. This is where you can start commands to build your program and control your movements. The instructions for each level are at the top of the page. Click the plus sign to change between long and short instructions. Try dragging blocks from the toolbox into the workspace. Stack in them and then click the run button to execute your commands. You might have to try a few times to get it right, and some of the puzzles have more than one solution, so experiment to see what works. If you want to try again, click the reset button to go back where you started. If you need to delete a command, just drag the block from your workspace back into the toolbox. Remember, click run to see what your code looks like in action. Okay, enough messing around, fellow adventurer. Let's start coding to find some underwater treasure. Okay. So we'll begin. Uh, first thing you got to do is pick a character, Minecraft Steve or Minecraft Alex. So I'm going to pick Minecraft Alex. And you'll always be told what you need to do up the top here. So you need supplies for the voyage ahead. Collect a boat from the chest. Okay, so that means we've got to take our Minecraft Alex up to the chest and open it and get the boat. So I have a couple of different commands that are available to me. I have um, move forward and turn left and I can also change that to turn right if I wish. But really what I need to do is get Alex to move from here to there. Now I have a little starter program here that says when run, which is basically when I press the run button, Alex will move forward one space. So if I press that now, she's gone forward one space, but that's not enough to get all the way to the chest. So what I need to do is reset that. See each of these, they're like a little square and each one of those is one. I need to move forward two spaces. And if I press run now, I get the boat. Now, here is an interesting thing that we'll come back to later. Uh, we did that in the blocks and it was very easy drag and drop. Underneath that is actually JavaScript code. Uh, it mightn't mean very much to you now, but JavaScript is probably the most popular programming language in the world today. Um, half, bit, most of the internet runs on JavaScript. Um, so that's it. So I want you to complete that exercise, uh, press pause, and then come back, and we'll move on to exercise number two. Okay, so now what we need to do is get Alex to the boat. So we've got to think about what way do we want Alex to move in order to get her to the boat, which is basically where we want her to move forward one space, then we want her to turn right, and then we want her to move forward another two spaces. So I want her to move forward one space, then I want her to move, turn right, and then I want her to move forward another two spaces. And if I press run, I get it. And don't worry if you make a mistake doing this. That's absolutely fine. There's going to be, I'm probably going to make loads of mistakes in this as well. Uh, although I have this done, done, done this exercise a few times before. Um, some of the, pu uh, the puzzles get more difficult as they go on as well. And I'm not always going to tell you exactly what you need to do. You have to figure it out for yourself. Okay, so assuming you're ready, Let's move on to number three. Okay, now, Alex is here at the bottom of uh, the kind of the game area, and we need to get all the way up here to this fish. 
okay, and to catch the cod, okay. So we've got to move forward. We've got to move forward a number of times. So if I look at that, one, two, three, I think it's six spaces, five or six spaces. So what I'm going to do is drag in five move forwards, okay. It's getting a bit tedious because I'm telling it to do the same thing over and over again. Maybe there's a better way. Let's try running this. Not far enough. Okay, I think Alex needs to go two more spaces. It's actually seven spaces in total. Okay, so if I reset and try running that program again, hopefully Alex will get the card. Yep. Okay. Now, remember before we were looking at the code, there was an awful lot of repetition there. It was the same thing over and over again. In this case, I said move forward seven times. And if we look at the code, the kind of JavaScript that will be underneath this, it's the same thing. It's just repeating. It's like, it, 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 it's not very efficient. Maybe there's a better way that we can do this. Great, we've caught a codfish. Did you know if you feed a codfish to a dolphin, the dolphin will guide you to a shipwreck where there may be treasure. We must be getting closer. The next set of puzzles are bound to be trickier, so we better learn some more coding skills. What's this? A cave? Welcome, adventurers. My name is Squid. I noticed you were using the same set of commands over and over in some of the last puzzles. Must have been a bit tiresome. Do you ever wish you had a way to do something over and over again? Like, you know, washing dishes or brushing your teeth without getting tired or bored? <laughs> that would be nice. Computers are really good at doing the same thing over and over again using coding loops. When you want your program to do the same instructions many times, you can use a loop. The loop contains instructions with the command to repeat until goal. Once your program starts a repeat until goal loop, it will keep running the instructions inside until it gets to the goal. Try this for yourself. Place the commands you want to repeat inside the repeat until goal block. Click run and watch it go. Well, that was a little weird. Who knew squids could code? I didn't even think they had fingers. So now we know about loops, let's use them to bag us some more treasure. Okay. So let's move on and try out one of these loops instead of writing the same code over and over and over again. Okay, so this time we've got to get Alex up to the dolphin uh, and Alex is going to feed the cod to the dolphin. So we've got to move a number of spaces forward. And again, I think it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces. So it'll be very similar to what we just did in the last exercise. The last time we put seven move forwards in. Except this time I'm going to use a loop and I have this repeat until goal. Okay, so repeat until you achieve what you want and move forward. Just snap that in there. So now I've added in, what, two lines of code? And if I press run, boom, we got it done. So previously we had to write seven lines of code but now we're writing two. Now here's a secret about computing people. We're all really lazy. We want to do things as efficiently as possible, okay? What that means is we want to write as, as few lines of code as we possibly can. So if I can do something in two lines of code and get the same result as that that writes it in seven lines of code, that's much, much better. It's much more efficient code. Let's move on to the next exercise. Of course, you can pause this at any point if you need uh, just a few moments to, to catch up. And please do, uh, this isn't a race. Uh, even though it's an hour of code, um, however long our video is going to be, some, sometimes people go through these in 20 minutes, sometimes people take an hour and a half. It doesn't really matter, it's not a race. You just do it at your own pace. Okay, now we are going to move along. We need to get Alex from here to here. There's a Nautilus shell hidden somewhere, explore the shipwreck to reach the chest. Okay, so here we are, and this is the chest. So I'm gonna have to kind of go turn, go down a bit, then turn and go over a bit again. So if I just 
run the code as it is. Alex is hitting up against the wall. This is not very good at all. I need to think about what I need to do, okay? Um, maybe you can have a think about it too. Actually, we'll pause it here and see if you can figure it out. And then I'll show you how to do it in a second. Okay, assuming you've had a go and tried to figure it out yourself, uh, let's, I'll have you, I'll show you how it, how it works, okay? So, uh, what we want to do is we want Alex to turn right, okay? So we want to make a turn right, squeeze that in there, and then I, I want Alex to move down uh, two spaces, I think. Yeah, and actually, if Alex does that again, if I do repeat on the goal, and if Alex turns again and goes forward two spaces, she should get to the uh, chest. So let's try that code now. Very, very nice. And now Alex has the shell. Now, remember before we were saying looking about the code and having a look at the JavaScript that's underneath? Let's just have a look at it now. It's getting a little bit more complicated. We have this repeat until goal function, and then we've got the turn right, move forward, blah, 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 and brackets and things like that. So say when I'm programming for real, this is the type of code that I write. But with the blocks, you're not getting bogged down in these like brackets and these semicolons and these curly brackets and things like that. But it's important that you realize that there is real code underneath. So you're doing real, real stuff here. Now, number six. So it's freezing out there. Catch a salmon on your way to the underwater ruins. So I need to get Alex up there and get the salmon. Now, there's also kind of a bonus in this level as well, in that there's a turtle. Can I write some code that will get the turtle too? Mm, that's an interesting one. So let's just think about it for a moment. Okay, or maybe you have a go, see if you can figure it out, and then I'll show you a way to do it afterwards. So pause it here, have a go, and come back to me when you're done. Okay, I hope that went well for you. And if it didn't, that's okay. Um, right, so how am I going to do this? Okay, so I maybe want Alex to, I'm gonna work this out now over here, okay? Uh, so I want Alex to maybe move forward. Is that two times or is it three times? I think it's three times, okay? Uh, and then turn right. Would that be correct? Let's see what happens there. Three and then, yeah. Alex moving forward three times. Now I don't want to have to do, you know, 20 lines of code that are move forward, move forward, move forward, turn right. There has to be better ways to do that. So I had move forward three times. So why don't I make this? Get rid of that stuff now. So I have repeat, reset. So move forward three times and then turn right. Hmm, interesting. Next thing I want to do is for Alex to move forward one, two, three, and then turn left. Okay, so I'll put in a repeat three times, move forward, and then turn left. So if I reset that, now you see what I'm doing is I'm building up my program as I go. I'm not trying to get it all right the first time. I'm building it up as I go. Let's run that. Okay, so what do you think will happen next? So I could need Alex to go forward three times and then turn right, isn't it? and then go forward another three times, and then turn. Well, that will get the salmon. So hang on, what if I was to actually put all of this into a repeat until goal block? So it will basically do this, go forward, turn right, go forward, turn left. two, three, turn right, one, two, three, got the salmon. Now the only thing is I didn't get the turtle. Is there a way I could change my code to get the turtle, I wonder? 
let's actually have a go at that again. I'm going to replay this level and see if I can like get all the extra animals. Okay, so I'm going to reset that. So I'm going to take this out of my repeat until goal block and I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, so what I would want to do there is to go instead of turning left at this point, what if I got rid of the left? Okay, and then I got Alex to go forward three times again. Actually, instead of moving forward, I could actually change that. Instead of putting that, putting in three times there, putting in another repeat, moving forward another three spots, I could actually change that and make this a six. So move forward six spaces. Mm, that could work. Yeah, that might work. And then get Alex to turn left. Then I could get him to move or her to move forward another three spaces if I wanted. So I could say repeat, move forward three spaces. That should work. Let's try this now. Five. Got the turtle turned. Now I've got the salmon. So I've got the salmon and the turtle. Had a program. Let's go back and have a look at it again. Basically what I'm trying to show you here is that there's lots of different ways that you can do this. There isn't always one right answer and that's really important in programming. There isn't always one right way to do things. There's lots of different ways and you just have to choose what way works best for you. Uh, I'm just going to move that one out of the way. So here I had the thing turn left, so I move forward three spaces, turn right, move forward six spaces, turn left. What if I just put what I had previously into a repeat onto the gold block. That would mean that once Alex gets to here, the turtle and turns left, we'll start into this block again. So move forward three times. But the thing about it is, you actually won't execute the rest of the code because we'll get the salmon as well. Turn, and now we should get the salmon. Kept moving forward. She's hitting up against the walls there. So what's happening? The program got locked in a loop. So what happened there was, the program, actually I didn't realize it was going to do that. So I made a mistake. Uh, with my program, Alex got locked in a loop of trying to do these things over and over and over again, which is not really good. So what I'm going to do, just put that in there, and then I'm going to put in, go back to what I had previously. And that should work for me. Sometimes you see pro computers get locked in loops where it's just like they get locked up and they're doing the same thing that you don't want them to do over and over and over again. Um, that's sometimes called an infinite loop. Um, and that's what happened there. Alex just got locked. <coughs> Boom. So I got the salmon and I got the turtle. So very happy with that. So let's just have a look at the code of that as well. As you can see, the code is getting more complex underneath the hood. Uh, but again, you don't need to worry about that unless you want to learn some JavaScript later on as well. Okay, let's move on to the next video. Wow, another three puzzles solved. And we've caught a salmon. Not quite as exciting as piles of gold, but we'll take what we can get. And I have a feeling that Nautilus shell will come in handy later. I wonder what lurks in these ruins. Perhaps another hint? Let's take a look inside. My name is Nettie and welcome to my ruins. We make decisions all the time based on conditions. If it looks like rain, then we'll grab an umbrella. If we're hungry, then we'll eat a snack. If we see a creeper, then we run in the opposite direction. Computers make these types of decisions too. They can actually respond to conditions using code. To program a response like this using your code command, select an if path block. 
Select the drop-down to create the command. For example, if you write the command if path to the right and place turn right inside the conditional, then when Steve reaches an open path to the right, he will always turn right. If there's no opening to the right, he will not turn right. These conditional if commands are helpful when you run code in unpredictable situations, such as mysterious ruins and underwater caves. Try using the if blocks and take your code for a spin. Wow, Natty's ruins were awesome. I really got to move out of my parents' house. So what do you think? Are the conditions right for us to complete the final puzzles? Let's give it a go. Okay, so let's try out some of these conditionals. And again, this is a really, really powerful part of computing. It's where you can write a program that so the computer can decide what it's going to do next based on certain conditions. In this case, we're going to say if Alex, if there's a path to the right, Alex might do something. And if not, Alex will carry on doing something else. So all I want to say here is if there's a path to the right, turn right. You need to get Alex from here to here. So she's going to go forward, 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 forward. But if she encounters a, a right hand turn, she'll take it. So then she go forward, forward, forward. There's another right hand turn. And then she'll keep going forward until she gets what she wants. So let's try that out and see what happens. Now where that differs from the previous one was I had to say when you've done this three times or six times, then you're to turn. Whereas now I say you can just keep doing this until you encounter a turn and then you can take the turn. So if this condition is met, then carry out this code. That's quite powerful. It's really, really cool actually. It's one of the one of the most powerful things about computers and it's what elevates computers above things like basic calculators. So so that's that. So let's move on to number eight. Okay, so I want you to have a go at this. You've got to get Alex around the lava. Okay, got to go around the lava, around the, the, the volcano and get to the tropical fish that looks like Nemo over here. So see if you can figure out how you could write a program using if pads and repeats. Um, and then I'll show you how I do it afterwards. Okay, so you've only, I'm just hoping you've had a go with this and now I'll show you how I would do this. So, uh, let's see. So I would need Alex to keep moving forward for a good long while and then basically turn right when she can and she can't turn right into these uh these, these coral blocks or these these kind of c blocks so let's say if there was a path to the right i want you to turn not turn left turn right then alex will move forward 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 now come across another right hand turn here and we'll turn again forward 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 and this will be a right hand turn because alex will be upside down and we'll go over there and should get the fish so let's have a look at that notice there's also a turtle there we might come back for the turtle in a few minutes so let's see how Alex is getting on yeah keep going forward encountering a path to the right so keeps going keeps going keeps going and now encounters a path to the right and gets the fish but I didn't get the turtle, so I'm going to go back and see if I can figure out how I could modify my code to also get the turtle. Uh, so how about, so if I reset that now, but what if Alex was to encounter a left-hand turn and she took that? Wouldn't that be useful? So what I'm going to do is add in another if block before my previous one, okay? Uh, so if there's a path to the left, turn left. And then Alex should come in here and then check to see if there's a path to the left. There isn't, but there is a path to the right. So go down to the right, get the turtle and then move down and then be able to turn right and hopefully go on. Although there may be a bug in my code. We'll find out in a moment. Let's try this now and see what happens. So 
Alex is encountering a right hand turn. Now is encountering a left hand turn. <gasps> and a right hand turn. Is moving forward. Moving forward. Getting the. Oh dear. What's going on here? Well now. Remember I told you about infinite loops. Here we have another one. Basically, Alex is always going to encounter a left-hand turn here, and he's just going to keep on going around and around and around and around and around and around, and is never going to get stuck to get out of our loop and get over to the tropical fish. So when you see this in other computer programs, it looks like the computer program has maybe crashed or, or just stuck doing nothing. So we need to modify our code. Actually, there's a really simple fix to this. I put the check to see if the path was to the left before the one to the right. If I move it afterwards, what will happen is Alex will always check to see if there's a right hand turn and only if there's a left hand turn will she go. So let's try this now and see what happens. So coming along, coming along, turn it to the right. Turn it to the left, moving forward, going down, yeah, oh, and turning back the way. So what happened there was at that point here where Alex encounters a right hand turn, she does turn right, but then there's also now a left hand turn, so she turns left again and then moves forward to get the fish. So with that small change, my program, my small program, was able to get both the turtle and the fish and complete things. And again, if I look at my code, this is the type of stuff that's happening underneath. I'd say you're getting fairly good at this now at this point. So why don't you try out this one yourself? You've got to get the heart of the sea, which is located in the treasure chest. You've got a new type of if block here. If standing on blue coral or if standing on red coral this is blue coral this is red coral so you're going to write a program that's going to change depending on what alex or steve whichever character you you're using what kind of block they're standing on so why don't you go and have a go at that pause the video and then come back when you're finished Okay, hopefully you've had a go, hopefully you've been successful. And if you haven't, that's absolutely fine. I'm here to get you unstuck. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want Alex to move forward until she gets to a blue block. And I want her to turn right. Then go forward until she meets a blue block. And then I want her to turn right again. Yeah, that'd be good. Then move forward, so until, which this time will be forward, because remember Alex will be upside down. What happens when she encounters a red block? Hmm, I'd like her to turn left. If she turns left, then she'll start going along this way. Then the blue block, if she turns right as a blue block, that'll bring her down there and then left. I think turning right as a blue block and left at a red block should work. So, move forward. If you encounter a blue block, turn right. If you're standing on a red block, on red coral, turn left. And now let's see what happens with this one. There's Alex swimming away. Yep, turning right. Going to turn right, because we're on a blue. Going to turn left now, because we're on a red. Yeah, going to turn right, going to turn left, going to turn right, going to turn right again. Keeping moving forward, encountering a blue one, turning right and moving forward. And then getting the heart of the sea out of the chest. So here I had quite a complex map. But because I'd written my program in that conditional way, by just basically saying always turn right if you encounter a blue block, always turn left if you encounter a red block, my small program was able to get Alex from the start point to the end point. Whereas if I was to write that with just kind of straight procedural code, 
uh, oh, there will be loads of lines. There could be maybe 30 lines of code in that. Whereas I got it down to six lines of code, which is much more efficient. And for a lazy programmer like me, that's really, really good. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, I want you to pause the video, try it yourself, and uh, see how you're getting on. And I'll tell you how to get it um, when you're done. And we're back. Okay, this time we've got to get the squid who's hiding there in the ocean monument. How can I get Alex to the squid? Now, I've got these, these are sea lanterns. So if you're standing on a sea lantern, do something. Hmm, so what will I do here? Actually, I'm going to be able to write a really small and simple piece of code to do this. Okay, so repeat until goal, move forward, and if you find a sea lantern, turn right. So this is going to be a really small piece of code now. And let's see what happens here. Alex is moving forward, encountering sea lantern, turning right. Another sea lantern going to turn right, moving past all the walls. Yeah. Flying along here. Yeah. Yeah and getting the squid so with a very small piece of code four lines of code i was able to get the squid okay let's move on to the next one we're nearly done now can you believe it we've done 10 exercises there's 12 in total although the last one is a kind of a bit of a cheeky one uh, let's do the what's the real last one which is number 11 okay and again want you to try to figure out how to do this yourself and then come back and see how I do it. So you can pause the video here, move forward, and then we'll have a look at it afterwards together. Okay. Okay, so now this time we need to build a wall of Prismarine which is this stuff here, around the black concrete. And this will activate the conduit and complete your challenge. Whatever the conduit is, I don't know. Um, okay, so I can just zooming in there. I don't need to do that. I will zoom out again. Uh, okay, <laughs> there's my computer having a moment. Okay, zooming back out again now. Right, what will I do? Okay, so I want Alex to if standing on this uh sorry it's not is it sand what is it no let's get rid of that okay i want alex to place some of this prismarine and keep going until standing on a sea lantern which is these things and then turn right and then place prismarine do you think that's going to work am i forgetting something let's try it out and see what happens and alex is just stuck there why because i said place the prismarine but i never said to move forward so they're two separate things Placing the prismarine block is one thing, but moving forward is another thing. So actually, what I gotta do is stick a move forward block in there as well. So place prismarine, move forward. Keep going until you encounter the sea lantern, turn right, and just keep doing that again and again and again and again and again. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Building it up. go and maybe you did it a different way that's absolutely fine as we saw there's lots of different ways that you can do this and now look I've activated the conduit in five lines of code congratulations you did it congratulations you did it congratulations congratulations 
What a great day. All the treasure hunting led to us to build a Minecraft conduit. Nautilus shells, treasure chests, and I just love the color of prismarine. And we learned how to code with loops and conditionals. Speaking of coding, there is one more level to this quest. Are you up for it, adventurers? It's a free play level and you can put your coding skills to use and build something incredible. Hmm, a place to hide your treasure, an underwater monument, a coral castle. Ah, so many ideas. Try using loops to create a repeat action and conditionals to prepare for all those unpredictable scenarios. You've certainly proven yourself an intrepid coder by now, and I can't wait to see what you build. And hopefully your adventures with code don't end here. Bon voyage! Yeah, so we've got to the end. The last level, remember I said it was kind of a cheating one, it's a cheeky one. Well, that's because it's free. You can just do whatever you want to. There is no goal. You can just do whatever you want. So you can build a coral reef, a volcano, a shipwreck. It's entirely up to you. You've got all of these blocks here. You can just do whatever you want. And the area is much bigger than this. It's all around here, actually, because if you move the character over a bit. So if I say, um, if I just get Alex to turn right and uh, I might get her to move forward, say nine times see what happens look alex swims forward and i've got all this area over here so you can do whatever you want like maybe i might change my code and just start uh putting codfish around the place spawn cod spawn will create a new character and there's loads of different ones like cods dolphins salmon sea turtles whatever you want i'm gonna put cods all over the place for a crack I'm sure you can come up with something much more exciting than my fishy thing. Anyway, uh, so that's the end of this Hour of Code activity. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and if you want to learn a bit more, well, you can check out some more of these videos and I might see you again soon. Um, or if you want to, you can go back to the Hour of Code website and click on some of the other activities. Uh, the dance party one is really good fun. Uh, we've done that a lot in our dojo and uh, also with my own family as well. Uh, that's always good fun. Uh, the Star Wars one is great crack as well. Uh, the Frozen one is really good. There's a lot of geometry in that one. So it's all about angles and drawing shapes. Um, there's loads of them there. They're all free and you can have a go. Uh, or if maybe you've done, had enough with this Minecraft one and that's absolutely cool too. Okay, uh, so thanks very much for uh, giving it a go. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, you never know, this might be the start of a beautiful friendship with code.